Hey everyone, this is Mr. Ray. I uh, apologize for my voice. I'm feeling a little under the weather today. And I want to make this video for my students uh, so that they can keep working while I'm not there. So, hey guys, sorry I'm not in today. Uh, I'd like to take a look at this water being pumped into an underground tank problem with you. This is the, the last problem on the first page of the handout from yesterday. And this is a slight variation on what we've been doing. So I just want to kind of walk you through this first one. And then I'm going to let you work the rest of this period. And for homework on the remaining two problems from this page. So we've got a situation here where water is being pumped into an underground tank at a constant rate of 8 gallons per minute. So that's going to be important, right? So water is going into this tank the entire time at a constant rate of 8 gallons per minute. However, water is leaking out of the tank at a rate of, well, this is this function here, right? Square root of t plus 1 gallons per minute. So we can think about the fact that the volume is increasing, right, at 8 gallons per minute, but the volume is also decreasing the amount of you know water in this thing at a rate of square root t plus 1 gallons per minute. So we're going to have to keep both of these in mind as we go through this problem. Uh, let's see what we got here. We're looking from 0 to 120 minutes, so there's two hours in this problem. At time 0, the tank contains 30 gallons of water. That's going to be important, right? So at t equals 0, the volume is 30 gallons. Right? So that's an initial condition. So the first question is how many gallons of water leak out of the tank from t equals 0 to t3? Well, water's going in 8 gallons per minute. It's coming out at a rate of square root of t plus 1 gallons per minute. So the water that leaks out is going to be the integral of the rate that it's leaking, right? So if it's leaking at t plus 1 gallons per minute, then if we integrate that from 0 to 3, that's going to give us well, dt, of course, right? That'll give us the amount of water that leaks out, right? This is what leaks out. And you can go ahead and plug that into your calculator. And oh, you can take the integral by hand, but this is a calculator active question. And that comes out to be 14 thirds. So how many gallons of water leak out of the tank from time 0 to t equals 3? 14 thirds, the integral of the rate that it's leaking. Moving on to part B. So now we want to know how many gallons of water are in the tank at time t equals 3. Okay, so water in the tank is going to have to do with how much water went in the tank plus how much water was already in the tank, right? So remember, at uh, 0, right, the volume at time 0 was already 30 gallons. Right, so there was that initial condition of 30 gallons of water. So we know that there are 30 gallons of water in the beginning, but over the first three minutes, how much additional water is going to go in? Well, if water is going into, right, remember the volume was increasing at a rate of 8 gallons per minute. So over three minutes, that's going to be 24 gallons. And the total amount of water at time equals 3 is going to be simply 30 plus 24 minus the 14 thirds that leaked out in the beginning, right? So remember, in part A, we found that in the first three minutes, 14 thirds leaks out of the, out of the pipe. In part B, we know that we started with 30. 24 gallons went in from this 8 gallon per minute pump, but we've got to take out that 14 thirds from the leaking. And that'll leave us with a grand total of 148 over 3 gallons in the tank. All right, so 30 is what we started with. 24 went in, 14 thirds came out. We're left with 148 over 3. All right, so part C, write an expression for A of T, the total number of gallons of water in the tank. All right, so we've got to take into account everything that's going on with this pipe now. So if I want to know how much water is in the tank, or excuse me, in the pipe at any one given time, well, it started off at 30, right? I know that we're losing water, again, at a rate of uh, square root of T plus 1 gallons per minute, but I'm gaining water at a rate of, 8 gallons per minute, right? So I start with 30, but to that 30, I have to add the 8 gallons per minute, right? So 8 times whatever time I'm looking at. If it's 1 minute, that'd be 8 gallons. If it's 5 minutes, it'd be 40 gallons, etc. But then from that, I have to subtract the amount of water that leaked out. Well, how much leaked out? That would be the integral from 0 to t, right? From starting to wherever we're interested in, of the square root of. Now, t plus 1, we don't want to use the same variable here as we do for the integrand, right? So the bounds and the integrand should be different. So we'll just make this an x plus 1. You could use any variable, but x, you know, pretty standard. And we'll integrate with respect to x, right? So we're going to integrate from 0 to t into this function, x dx. And that's all you need to do for this problem. Notice it just says write an expression for a of t, the total number of gallons in a tank. Well, there you go. That's your expression for a of t. What you started with plus what you gain 
minus what you lose, which is the hardest part because you have to integrate this function from zero to whatever time value we're interested in. Now part D, water is being pumped in the tank and we want to know from zero to 120, the amount of water in the tank a maximum. So we're looking for a max value this time, right? When, uh, at what time, right? Do we get a maximum value? Well, that's where this function we just wrote is going to come in handy, right? So over here we figured out that the amount of water in the tank at any one given time is what we started with plus the amount that goes in plus minus the amount that comes out. So I'm going to bring that over here into this next slide. And if I want to know when it's at a maximum, I have to consider when A prime is zero, right? I got to look at the derivative of this thing. So what is the derivative of that function? Well, A prime of T, 3 to 30 is zero, it's a constant. The derivative of 8T is eight, right? Minus, now the derivative of this, hopefully you see FTC2 popping up here, right? This is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. If I'm gonna take the derivative of this integral, all I need to do, since this is just a constant to a variable, I'm going to swap it out. So minus the square root of uh, t plus 1. And this is my function that gives me the derivative of the amount of water in the tank, right? This is the rate at which the water in the tank is changing. Now, of course, if I want to know when it is at a maximum, I'm going to want to take that derivative and set it equal to 0, right? So we'll take 8 minus the square root of t plus 1 equal to 0. And that'll happen anytime, you know, t square root of t plus 1 equals 8, which means t has to equal 63. So if we think about what the sign chart is going to look like for this derivative, you know, starting at 0 and running all the way up to t equals 120 at the top of our domain here. Oops, excuse me, 120. At 63, I'm going to have a 0. But what about before there? Well, up until 63, like if I plug smaller numbers in here, this is going to be less than 64, so the square root will be less than 8. And when I subtract, I'll get something positive. So this is positive there, negative there, which means this is a relative max, right? So that's the point that we're looking for. Justify our answer. Well, let's make sure that we do that carefully, right? So we'll make a little bit of room here. I'm going to say something to the effect of, right? So the amount of water in the tank is at a maximum at t equals 63 because a of t, or excuse me, a prime of t, right, is greater than 0 when t is in between 0 and 63 and a of t is less than 0 for t between 63 and 120. And so there you go. Uh, this problem, again, not really too tough. Let's put the whole thing up there. Right? Okay, so the idea of this problem is that you have to pay attention to what's going in and what's going out. Uh, Mr. Kenscone calls these in-out problems, right? So the idea is that you've got water going into this pipe You've also got water leaking out of the pipe, and you have to pay attention to both of those as well as how much water was in the pipe to start with. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, I'll put the link in the description for the actual problem that I'm working on here. It's one of the AP pre-response questions. And if you're in my class, then you should now be working on the other two problems on that sheet, and whatever you don't finish will be for homework. Have a great day. Uh, if you're not in my class and you like this video, uh, found it helpful, please like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or comment below. Have a great day.